situation in Trukana where there was standoff last week with residents saying that they cannot allow oil to flow from there to Mombasa where it is supposed to be being transported uh, using or rather by road but um, there were voices of uh, opposition saying that uh, the government has forgotten the security situation in the country and we'll be talking to our guest who is uh, Ikal Angele uh, from the Friends of Lake Trukana uh, before we do that discussion let's listen in to the voices of residents when they spoke uh, to our reporters last week we wanted them to to to, to bring the attention to the turkana county where there is oil they address the issue of security they address the issue of national national uh, jobs talo jobs now i want to ask county commissioner when the list for directors was uh, released by the president none of turkana not even one turkana was in that Sasa uru amesema ni sisi tupaje nini? Tunataka kupunga mafuta uru akuja amaleze sisi. Hiyo ni micho yangu. Ile monana hapa senje. 5%. Nataka na ange kwa TM yetu kila mtu afuate kwa TM. Hakule kama lo petu ni. Eh, kila mwezi afuate. Kwa sababu hii mafuta ni yetu. Aga wewe mafuta hapa. Hiyo Hiyo ndiyo hiyo ndiyo monono monono imefanyika hapa. Tumeamua leo ya kwamba hakuna mafuta ya kwenda mpaka amani ipatikane katika Turkana East. Alafu ya mwisho mambo ya percentage viongozi wetu wamesitisha mambo ya 5% kufanya maendeleo. Sisi kama wakazi wa Turkana County ya Turkana East tumesema 5% iende kwa community kama ATM wapate pesa ya kuweza kusaidika. 20% na 75% ikaweza kufanya mambo ya maendeleo. Right, those are the residents of Trukana, especially Lokichar area, who are opposed to the situation uh, that uh, what, oil, not water, oil is being transported to Mombasa. They were saying that they have been neglected in terms of security. Uh, just, uh, Angele, how has this situation changed since last week until now? Um, there's been efforts by the cabinet secretary to meet up with the leadership of especially of the greater Trukana County, but also especially Trukana South and Trukana East, so they can resolve and just start a conversation on what exactly are the issues and how to take it forward from there. Mm -hmm. So as of Friday last week, uh, the cabinet secretary, Honorable Munez, and uh, the Honorable Governors, mm -hmm. Governor and uh, members of parliament had a meeting in, in Lokori um, mm -hmm. inside a conversation mm -hmm. to at least start the conversation on what are the issues. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, but, but listening to them, they are saying that uh, it's a myriad of issues. Yes. There is security. Yes. There's this question of they do not understand how this revenue is being shared. Yes. There's actually an interesting uh, absence from one of the residents who was saying uh, that if 75% is remaining with the national government, yes. 20% with the county, yes. then this 5% that is coming to the community should mm -hmm. actually go straight to the pockets of residents. Yes. Uh, how difficult has it been to get information to the residents and the community in as far as this oil production is concerned? I think one of the biggest problems is that the issue of access to information mm -hmm. um, as a country. So the information comes out in piecemeals. And so the focus has been on the revenues. But then there's myriad of issues, as you said. The entrance of Talo into the area, in many of the local communities, especially the Harders, are saying, you come in and you tell me you're going to be here. I don't know for how long. So when I'm letting you in, mm -hmm. it's like a tenant. If I give you a lease, mm -hmm. I know you're here for a duration of time. So I think the, the fact that information has not been given in full mm -hmm. to communities so that they can analyze it, internalize it, but make consent from an informed perspective mm -hmm. is where the problem comes in. When it comes to this 5%, it really is something that as a country and as a county, we have to have deeper conversations about, yes, Perhaps how communities get the money needs to be discussed in policy. But there's a cost that communities are incurring na right now. Mm -hmm. They're losing land. And sure. it's huge chunks of land. Mm -hmm. These are harders. Mm -hmm. They move from place to place in such a water and pasture. Mm -hmm. And while somebody might think this is idle land, it is not idle land. So telling them that 5% is going to go only for development is not taking into account the costs that people who have lost land, uh, uh, mobility, have lost uh, access to pasture and water are actually uh, suffering from. So I think that that has been sort of jumped into the into like discussions of five percent. But then not even mentioning that five percent is not a, a, a situation of now. Mm -hmm. It's going to come in the next five, six, seven years. Mm -hmm. So what happens between now when transportation begins, and 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 that time when we start to when Talo 
uh, takes its gets its its uh, money mm -hmm. and then now the shares with, with the government talking about land who owns this land in terms of uh, who's the registered owner are there title deeds for the residents mm -hmm. or is it just public land to land in Japan is community land but because we are a com commun community who have territorial areas so there's territories where communities traditionally used to graze, um, th so there's various rights. So there's the territorial rights. So if a particular territory is um, taken up by a community, mm -hmm. and then others come have other access rights, so grazing rights. So communities who come in and can graze during certain times. Mm -hmm. So they're communal lands that are owned and, and, and uh, accessed um, um, and have controlled, are controlled by certain territories. Mm -hmm. And so it's not public land. It is community land, and the, the argument has been, which is this community? But then we always we always inform the investors and the government that there is com there's territories where people know and identify with. But according to the Community Lands Act, um, th 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 there is the requirement that uh, such land is being held by a county government in interest. Yes. Have there been conversations since that, uh, th that act was passed? Have there been conversations to really, uh, should I call it delimitation of that land? So while the Community Land Act has passed, regulations are still pending. And, and it takes for the regulations to operationalize the Community Land Act. Mm -hmm. And that has been the argument. So there's a lot of pending, pending legislation. So there's a pending legislation of the Community Land Regulation. Mm -hmm. and then the, pub, the Petroleum Exploration and Production Bill. So mm -hmm. all this are still pending while we are pushing for the oil to move. And while, yes, it might be seen as good for the country to allow for development to happen, I think we have to think about how we're first tracking this legislation so that we're ensuring that communities' lands are secured, mm -hmm. that the argument that which community am I compensating and the, the compensation should go to National Land Commission or not should stop because this uh, territories and its access routes that communities use and the fact that so far no conversation is being had about uh, their compensation is worrying to many communities because they're hard as they're not every day available to be in barazas and in conversations that are happening because they're constantly moving for uh, you know water and pasture. pasture so leaving them out and not really engaging them in a very clear way to ensure that their lands are secured and if somebody is cordoning off that land to use it for oil, oil exploration and extraction, that somebody should actually start a conversation on how this compensation is happening. Yet, Angelei, we know that the leaders have spoken. They have been holding conversations with mm -hmm. the government, even mm -hmm. in the conversation about the bill that is yet to be passed, that yeah. is the Petroleum uh, Exploration Development and Production. Mm -hmm. uh, it is yet to be passed, yes, but there have been conversations and actually concessions that 75% uh, remains with the national government, 20% goes to the county government, and 5% goes to the community, uh, the, the host community. Does it mean then that your leaders have been taking part in conversations but not, but not involving the communities? I think the worrying part is while the legislation is going to happen based on this discussion, the fact that the oil, the land issue is not being spoken about, mm -hmm. the water issues, the costs that communities bear is not being taken into account. Then we have to then say within this 75, 20 and, and 5 percent, where is the cost? going to come from to cater for this community. And mm -hmm. until we then can do that, then you're living out a community and having an ex exclusive uh, sort of development. And, and yet there's supposed to be some sort of inclusion, mm -hmm. you know, at every level with public participation um, enshrined in our constitution. That, sh that is very critical. Um, yes, we don't have a law yet. And I think that's what's worrying for communities that right now, while we're saying 75, 25, mm -hmm. where is the law? that actually actualizes that. Mm -hmm. It was a conversation had within State House yes. and announced. Yes. But there is nothing by law. But I have seen it in the bill. Yes, it was in the bill. Yes, it was in the bill. <laughs> but you see, as, as, as of now, it's yet to be passed. Mm -hmm. And so what, what's very critical for communities is why not pass it? But also the other side, apart from government, there's the aspect of, of the oil company. Tallow Oil has its own policies that it should be, uh, it should adhere to. So mm -hmm. free prior informed consent. Tallow um, is, is supposed to, because it's getting fi financing from, from the IFC, from the International Financial Corporation, there are certain uh, aspects that should be catered for in terms of informing communities and, and getting them to give consent. Mm -hmm. uh, if then a community says, no, you cannot pass the, through this place, you have to pass through this other place. I think Tallow should also be able to hold itself to account uh, mm -hmm. beyond just what government is pushing for. Uh, 
Angele, we'll return to the conversation, but first let's cross over to Trukana in Lodu, I believe, where Emmanuel Chiboita, our reporter there, is standing by. And Emmanuel, we saw some images that, that is last week and the past week of people uh, barricading roads and blocking the transportation and production of oil, uh, the oil well, or oil fields rather. Uh, has the situation changed? Because we understand that uh, last week there, was, there were conversations that uh, said that uh, there would be some sort of a ceasefire in quotes. Yes, actually, I'm getting you loud and clear, Sam Gituku, in the studio. I'm actually in Lodwa, and uh, the process that was going on last week uh, concerning the issues of oil has been solved halfway, because uh, on Friday last week, the Rift Valley Regional Commissioner, Mr. Mwongo Chimwanga, together with all the Turkana leaders, converged in Lokori, and Lokori in Turkana East, where the... Uh, issues were, they were addressed to the people so that they can be able to be solved. And actually one of the main concerns which the people were complaining was all about security. And you can remember before when oil was uh, transported in, to Mombasa the other time, a day later, bandits attacked. And that was the main issue which people uh, were very unhappy with. And the regional commissioner, Mr. Mongo Chimwanga, assured residents that before anything, before oil is uh, being transported again, he's going to ensure that he's going to bring security. And as we speak now, a platoon from Nairobi has been deployed in Capedo, whereby this was a surety from Mongo Chimwanga was the RC that he is going to solve in security issues, whereby now we have a platoon of uh, officers stationed in Capedo. Mm -hmm. And another two platoons, I have been promised that all oh, by by today in the evening mm -hmm. they are going to come to stay here in Lokori. So this one is one of the measures to step up in security and boost security in the region, which was promised by the regional commissioner. And uh, actually, that was on Friday. Today there is a public participation which is going on in Turkana South, whereby leaders, uh, minister, the CS for Petroleum together with the governor, together with all the MPs, are addressing residents who blockaded oil the other time to tell us the grievances, to tell, us, to tell them what they have resolved as leaders, and also to, uh, plead to, with the, to plead with the residents to allow the oil to be transported. Actually, these are the, some of the measures that have been in place, and as we see, by Wednesday, the leaders accepted that if all these things are going to be to be to be implemented by Wednesday, we are expecting all the five trucks to start going to Mombasa. And Emmanuel, you, you speak of uh, Wednesday as the day that you expect that uh, transportation of oil to Mombasa will resume. But when you speak to your sources at Talo Oil, has the production resumed, or are they still waiting to see? Now, actually, some there is actually no production in in Talo. What happened? The trucks that were supposed to take the crude oil was packed with uh, with the crude oil to Mombasa. They sent to Mombasa. The same truck was blocked in Kalemo Rock, mm -hmm. and that's when the protesters blocked the truck. They said they wanted jobs, they wanted tenders. So the same truck was supposed was forced to go back to Lokter some 40 kilometers away. So the same same trucks are the ones which are supposed to go back again. To Mombasa. There is no any other track or any other production that is taking place now. For now, it's only the pilot team, which is the early oil pilot team, which is the same for only trucks, specified trucks to carry crude to Mombasa. There are no more production. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. Do continue pursuing that story. We'll be talking to you later on. And back in studio, um, Ikal, <laughs> Ikal Angele, uh, talking about, we, we see the situation that Emmanuel is talking about, the public participation mm -hmm. sessions that mm -hmm. are supposed to be being held, mm -hmm. and of course the efforts by the security agencies mm -hmm. to see mm -hmm. that uh, the place is secure once mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. But we also know that uh, the oil will not turn commercial until about 2022 mm -hmm. earliest. Yes. Uh, but if these disruptions continue, then it, uh, that is just being pushed over mm -hmm. or forward. Mm -hmm. um, so. What are the expectations of the communities in as far as uh, the benefits that are concerned? Because now in the meantime, uh, the production continues, but mm -hmm. the commercialization begins earliest 2022. I think that
two aspects to it. So there is the local content aspect that communities, you've had uh, Emmanuel mentioning, that communities are expecting jobs and they're expecting uh, contracts. I think one, we have to manage those expectations. That mm -hmm. What sort of jobs are we looking at? And what policies do we need to put in place? In places like Uganda, they're very clear that unskilled labor has to be 100%. Semi-skilled labor has to be at a certain percentage, like 70%. Mm -hmm. But be able to say, not just 70%, that is, 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 you know, it's just uh, standstill, 70%. Mm -hmm. But we have to be saying that if it's 70% now, it's 70%, but in the next five years, it has got to be 100%. And that way, where county government and, and Talo Oil, but also with national government, work to be able to make sure that you're moving from a 55% to 70% to 100% uh, um, skilled labor or semi-skilled labor. Mm -hmm. I think that needs to be sorted out. Contract-wise, the same thing. What do we need to put in place as a country, as a county, as a people, to be able to move from this percentage of employment contracts and the rest to the next. But I think the other part is also with this early oil that, that's being mentioned. Uh, it's very clear that Talo did not undertake an environmental social impact assessment before the early oil process began. And, and so right now, in last week, I think on the third, they were undertaking a, a process in Nairobi and then another one in Turkana. But you cannot come later on and undertake a consultation around environmental social impact assessments when the process has already begun. Are you certain that uh, the environmental and social impact assessment was not done? It was not done. It, was, it started being done, but when questions were raised, the contractor Golda Associates was stopped. And so it is critical for us to make sure that corporate institutions working in this country undertake full assessments, social mm -hmm. and, and environmental assessments, before any process begins. Mm -hmm. Because we cannot allow for this and say, oh yes, we are now undertaking it now when oil has already started being moved to the other place and some of us going to the community and saying please join in and be part of this process are telling you you're telling us to be part of the process when the oil has already left and i think that is very critical okay. so so holding them to account on that on that is very is, is important and then informing communities what does early oil mean is it that it is we are testing the waters what does that mean we're testing the oil that it gets there and how it moves from one place to another but communities think that this oil is going to markets and that means when money comes, like every year, uh, we are harders. We take our got to market. When you come back, you come back with food or you come back with money. So mm -hmm. when communities are seeing oil going, they're saying, what's coming back to us? And I think that expectation has to be managed by the leadership. It has to be managed by Talo Oil, but most of all, by the national leadership. Mm -hmm. and, and having a very clear conversation, that's what we go back to in terms of transparency and accountability. As a country, w unless we discuss the issues of accessing information, transparency and accountability within the extractive sector. Sure. We are stuck with piecemeal information that doesn't really doesn't help in managing expectations of communities and citizens as a whole.